Hey all Native Tubes here and how you doing? Um, yeah, I was going to do Bathroom Chronicles, but I'm not. As you can see, I'm not in my bathroom. Uh, um, I got a few things I want to discuss today. Uh, day number two, day dose of uh, self-isolating. And it is official. My county goes into lockdown. I don't know why they're calling it lockdown. Because at this point right now, they're not locking anyone down. They're asking people to self-isolate at home, to stay home, only go out for food, doctors, and medical supplies. And uh, we'll have to see how well that's working. And uh, last week, the week before, um, my best friend, her son, got his necessary, uh, what do they call it, necessary personnel identification papers. That's so they can travel to and from work and not get harassed by the popo. Really? What's that about? Because all these people won't stay home and stay off the roads. Um, yeah, and my son, her son is a grocery worker. My son works for uh, the government, um, like locating lines for construction and power lines, water lines, phone lines, cable lines, that kind of stuff. You know that like 1-800 dig right? That's what uh, he does. So all necessary personnel have these papers or will soon be getting their identification papers so that they can travel to and from work. Has your family gotten these papers yet? What's your take on this? Um, what do you think they're gonna do if you're caught out after curfew without these papers? Our, my county officially went into, I don't know why they call it a lockdown. Um, it's mandatory, self-isolating. Yeah, we'll have to see how that goes. But I want to hit on, um, touch base with you guys on what the president said today, what Governor Pritzker in Illinois said today, and uh, what Governor Parsons said Starting tomorrow, March the 24th, we will be closing the state capitol and state office buildings throughout the state. Only identified essential personnel will be allowed access to the state capitol building, and only essential personnel will report to work at other state offices. And our farmers, ranchers, processors, manufacturers, and grocery stores across the state are working hard to keep the shelves restocked. Today marks the start of National Ag Culture Week, and I want to thank all of those in the ag culture industry for what they do, especially during a time like this. Agriculture plays a vital role in taking care of our most basic needs during a public health emergency. Missouri Department of Ag Culture Director Chris Chien will join us on Wednesday to provide more updates. The last All right. Governor Parsons said there is no need to be hoarding, especially food, because uh, he said our ag, Missouri Ag, has plenty and they're doing their best. If people would quit hoarding and quit rushing out and buying the whole shelf off, there's plenty of food for Missouri for this 30-day lockdown. Emergency Management Agency 
and the Missouri Department of Economic Development to seek assistance for small businesses throughout the SBA's Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. The SBA has approved our request, which will make low interest disaster loans available statewide to small businesses and private nonprofit organizations. the top issue we're dealing with today is the same one we were dealing with last week and over the weekend. And that is PPE, personal protective equipment for hospitals, EMS, law enforcement, and the fire service. Everyone that uses PPE needs more of it. I can tell you that we are pursuing PPE from all available sources and working to turn it around and ship to those need it as soon as possible. PPE supplies from gowns, masks, shields, goggles, and gloves at a cost of millions of dollars. To bring you up to date, last week our strategic national stockpile received truckloads of gowns, masks, shields, and gloves. We divided up those shipments and other PPE shipments that were received the week before and sent to a total of 147 hospitals and EMS agencies. In all, more than half a million PPE were shipped out to hospitals and EMS. Next week to 10 days. It will be shipped to law enforcement and fire safety agencies across the state as soon as possible. Now here's what we're doing to acquire more PPE. We're currently working to procure millions of dollars worth of PPE through three sources. Our disaster funds for the state of Missouri, the strategic national stockpile, and the Federal Emergency Management Agency. It is our understanding that our partners are working as fast as possible to bring this PPE to the state of Missouri. I want to assure all agencies that we are working as fast as possible to get it to you. What I have a feeling it's going to be a really long 30 days and all of the fear porn out there. Oh my God. Have you all listened to the president speak and your governors and your mayors and yeah, we get to listen to Pritzker in Illinois, as well as Mayor Krusen in St. Louis, and then Governor Parsons, and then the President and his task force, and oh, I listen to them all, and then I go to the different interweb social media, and all of the fear porn, we're going to be coming for you, we're coming for you, we're coming for you, well, my take on that is, not yet. Preppers, you don't need to be concerned. Don't fear the knock on your door. What they're saying is, that what he's saying is, he's not coming after families that are stockpiling for family use, for your family, for you to stay fed, for you to stay healthy. Um, what he, what they are doing is. They will knock on the door of anyone who has a warehouse full of what they've considered or listed as scarce medical supplies during an emergency cri uh, national crisis. If a person has a warehouse full of, say, um, face masks or PPEs, and they have this warehouse or two stocked full and they plan on trying to control the market and the prices on these and price gouging, expect a knock on your door. They are coming for you because that's not going to be allowed and they're going to give you every opportunity to contact them and they will pay fair market price and buy these from you. So that is my take on what they said today. Now, Governor Pritzker, being the royal flush that he is, whoosh, insert toilet flush here, um, all he could do was gripe and complain and piss and moan about 
how the government didn't give him all he was asking for. That they got just a mere fraction of what they wanted. Well, you know, buddy, there's 50 other states and how many territories that need the same thing? So, you know, the government had to divide those up. Missouri's gotten two shipments of PPEs and face masks and medical supplies, and they went to 157 hospitals, and they'll be getting more shipments. Now, what Prisker's doing with his, who knows? But uh, they're wanting all this kind of federal money and shit, and what are they going to do? Give the rich people this money and not the workers? I don't know, but Illinois is really screwed up. Um, so, yeah, guys, my proper buddies, don't be afraid. They're not coming for you or me or any of us. They're coming for those that are stockpiling warehouses full and going to charge $100 a mask or $100 for an MRE. It's those people that need to watch out. So one more thing. If any of y'all are on a lockdown, has any of your family members, have you, your kids that go to work, have they been given their um, necessary personnel identification papers so that they can travel to and from work and not be harassed by the popo? Yeah, what's that all about? Oh look, FedEx. making a last ditch run uh, so yeah um, my best friend her son got his papers last week um, I think the neighbor he said his girlfriend she has her identification papers that she's a necessary personnel so uh, yeah what's that mean that now that we have these curfews on us and we're in this mandatory self-isolating um, what does that mean that if we get caught out after a certain time without these papers that we're going to be harassed? We're going to be fined? Are we going to be arrested? Yeah, folks, hang on. I think it could be get, could get kind of fun, interesting. Um, if these people would just stay home, uh, but they won't listen. They will not stay home. It's like you tell a kid, don't touch that. And... The first thing they want to do is go touch it. So, yeah, I, I don't know. This this will be interesting to watch these next 30 days, 29 days play out. Um, FEMA fun camps are just around the corner. Would Hillary call those adult fun camps? Ah, for you and me. Illinois, which is where my daughter is, and they went into self-isolation um, three days ago, so they're in day number three, Trace, where St. Louis is in day number two in St. Louis County, and now my county's in day number one. So I guess this is actually day number one of SI C19. Boy, these cars going by out here, um, looks like they're staying home, right? Are people going to listen? Are they going to have to call in the uh, National Guard? They will if they have to, is what he said, but he's hoping people use common sense and courtesy and uh, follows what they're asking. Uh, Pritzker, Illinois. Okay, my daughter lives in Illinois, and so I have in our local news here, because I'm in the St. Louis metro area, we get both Illinois and Missouri news. Um, so Pritzker, he wasn't, he was playing into the people's fear, switching it over to be political. And, you know, because he's a D behind his name, he's a D. And so he's blaming the feds, blaming this task force. He's throwing the blame and he was crying and pissing and moaning. They didn't get what they needed. They need millions of these PPEs and they're needing MREs and they didn't get any, they just got a fraction of what they were needing. You know, and our governor got on there and he said that, you know, they've asked the, the federal government and we've received two shipments and granted it's not nearly enough, but the first shipments, another self-isolator um, but the shipments that he's received so far are going they're all going to the essential 
medical personnel first and emergency responders um, and that's how they're going to distribute it out he has asked if anybody is uh, sitting on thousands or large amounts of these items that they need the face mask the surgical gloves etc and so on that you contact someone from their office and uh, they will make every attempt to purchase these from you at fair market price and this is also what the federal government said but they're not speaking to families uh, trying to protect their families they're speaking to individuals holding mass majority quantities of things that have now been deemed as necessary and scarce uh, for the health and safety of the population those that are holding these mass hordes say a stocked warehouse full of I don't know face masks surgical face masks hey you now we got another one Wow so these people that are hoarding these warehouses full and they think that they're gonna flood the market and try to control the prices and price gouge charge you know a hundred hundred fifty dollars per mask or per box of 50 mask they're coming after you and they've set aside a they're appointing a special prosecutor and investigators and yes they will be knocking on your door so please do not try to sell a roll of toilet paper for 60 bucks because you're going to get a knock on your door. And you know, these young people think, it can't happen to me. I'm young. I'm immune to it. Or like, my daughter came up with this weird thing. Oh, well, I've already had it. You know, remember how sick I was at Thanksgiving and, and Christmas? I've already had it. Well, my dear, we I sitting and thinking about mom and how fast she went downhill in January. On the uh, 5th, she walked in the door and she said, oh, I have a sore throat. By that night, she couldn't breathe. Her blood sugar was up to four or 500 and she was delirious. And um, I kept saying, I need to take you to the ER. And she said, no, you're not. And I said, well, I'm calling your doctor. She said, well, I'll find a new doctor. And then within 48 hours, I mean, she couldn't even, she couldn't even walk. And I took her to the ER. So in 48 hours, she went from driving herself to town, walking in the door and saying, I'm getting a sore throat, to having to be on life support. And her kidneys have, had fully shut down. Her lungs had shut down. And uh, she had for eight days. And then she finally got to come home. Now, we would have thought, that sounds like classic c19 right well apparently you know i was looking through all her records that we got from her stay and they did test her for c19 influenza a b one two and three and they tested her several times so and she was negative for all of them and i had no idea then what c19 was but they uh, had coronavirus in her virus test that she was getting done and you know, those first three days before anybody could go in her room, you had to put a full bio hazmat on to go in and just sit with her while she was, you know, in a coma. So apparently healthcare workers possibly knew something before we did. You know, I had a friend that was over in China doing some business and he came back around New Year's and he told me yesterday when we were talking is he begged, he begged them to test him because he had been there and apparently I guess he must have been sick or he was worried that he was carrying the virus and he was over there in like November and December taking care of business so he knew when he came back New Year's that they had a problem and I saw a video from the WHO when they were announcing a world pandemic it was dated January 30th but our local news put it on in March, acting like it was just being called out by the WHO, um, the World Health Order Organization um, pandemic. And it was the exact same speech that he gave on January 30th. 
so okay my mind's boggled here did they hold this information if so why did they withhold that so y'all stay safe stay home and please stay well be kind to each other and please share a smile share a joke um, do something kind for someone today Uh, I'm going to try to keep up my bathroom chronicles, the DD Critter Crew, um, just to try to find a little bit of humor here and there when I can to make you all laugh or smile or brighten your day just a little bit. Uh. You just stay calm and stay home. Stay safe.